What a night, what a night. Look, I didn't want to tell you, my name's Clay. Uh, I did want to tell you that. I didn't want to tell you about all of my jealousy. And so I invited some friends that I feel like are really eating up with jealousy. They're going to sit up here on this panel with me. Please welcome to the stage, Joy Phoenix, Nikki Palmer, Ryan Leak, the three of the most jealous people I know. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. These people have jealousy whooped. They got it straight whooped. They got nothing to be envious about. Uh, we're in a series called Emotional Hygiene. It's important to take a shower. It's important to brush your teeth. It's important to wear deodorant. It actually doesn't just make your life longer, but it makes your life better. But we think even more than just physical hygiene, we think emotional hygiene is extremely important. And so during these four weeks of emotional hygiene, we've talked about some of the most toxic emotions that we're all eaten up with and how do we fight them? How do we deal with them? What, what would God say to us? to directly deal with these emotions. And so I've asked three great friends of mine to come and help me discuss what it feels like to be jealous. Oh, First up, sing it. <laughs> I thought they would sing I it. Thought you were gonna sing Nikki it. Palmer, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Ryan Leak. Ryan is from Dallas, Texas, not from Dallas, Texas. You're from Rockford, Illinois. Is that Chicago. what you're talking about? Chicago. Okay, okay, Chirac. Chicago. Chirac. Okay, the Windy City. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You put the wind in Windy City or yeah. the wind in Windy City, Who maybe. Knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> and then down here on the end, we've got Joy Phoenix, all the way from Buckhead Church, coming to us live. Her beeper went off on her ankle bracelet because she's OTP. <laughs> she already stopped at the Olive Garden. She went by Bed Bath & Beyond. She's going to hit up Chili's on the way home for some, for some chips and uh, salsa. Welcome, Wait, Joy. Uh, welcome out of the perimeter. Let's start with Nikki. Um, Nikki uh, Palmer is an inside-out small group leader here. She, she leads some high school students. Shout out to her girls. That's right. Hey, girls. Hey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're 16 on the road and staying out late tonight. Yes, Clay. they are. I endorse it. I ain't going to tell your parents. Um, <laughs> Nikki, your maiden name, when I first heard about you, was Noto or Noto. You're from Birmingham, Alabama. You had roll your. Tide. <laughs> roll Tide. Nikki rolls with the Tide. <laughs> Nikki had her own television show on ESPN. Holla at your girl, please. Woo! Come Woo! on. What, what show was that? I'll let you tell it, Nikki. She What's dropped your... it all to come work at ESPN? North Perk Community Church. I want to e hear this. It That's was right. on the U. Was it on the U? On the, I did a little bit on the U and then, um, the you Ocho. know. Yeah, say what? The Ocho. Yeah, the Ocho. <laughs> on the Ocho. Um, so tell yeah. them about it, Nikki. Tell us about your life. 60 seconds, Nikki Palmer. Hit on it. the clock. Here we go. Um, so my past is in sports broadcasting, so we're gearing up for the fall. Um, and yeah, I, I accomplished uh, my dream, my first dream at a pretty early age. And um, there was a lot of envy and jealousy in that, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, met my husband. Um, I have an awesome husband and uh, just had a little girl about three and a half months ago. So Amazing. shout out to Frankie. Hope she's in bed. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I had a really awesome opportunity. I work full time here at North Point as creative director. Um, which, by being an inside out leader, it kind of led me to North Point, and then uh, here I am on staff, and I love it. I love this church, and MP Knights, you guys have done an awesome job. This just feels fun, right? Does it not? I yeah. mean, we just broke out Nick Jonas. What else? What else could <laughs> I mean, we do? Hey, um, Nikki, but seriously, what was the show called? It was called the College Football Road Show? That's what we all want to know uh, about. It was called Road Trip, and Road Trip. Um, hosted a television show, and then um, did sideline reporting for uh, college football, which I love. Um, so yeah, it was, okay. it was a good season. I didn't tell you I was gonna ask this. Most interesting person you interviewed on the sideline and rudest person on the sideline. Uh, rudest Bobby Petrino. Uh oh, <laughs> sorry, hey, that came out fast. You can get away with any Bobby Petrino jokes in Atlanta all you want. Right, so I felt like I was in good company with I'm that. I'm kidding. If you're related to Bobby or Bobby, if you're here tonight, we love you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Yeah. You should repent, but God does love you, okay? Yeah, um, I had some good ones. You know, this, is, this probably won't come to a shock, but Dabo Sweeney um, is probably Great one interview. of my favorite people. Um, my husband actually played football at Clemson, so um, they're really good people, and he just, like, he opens his heart That's cool. um, to anyone and everyone that he meets. And I'll never forget, I was doing um, a Clemson game and I was just kind of having not a good day. You know, it's not all glamorous um, on TV. And um, I was having a really rough day. And after the interview, uh, he handed me a cross out of his pocket. 
And it was just kind of one of those awesome moments, you mm. know, that just kind of validated, hey, God, like you are with me on this really rough road mm. that I was on professionally for a long time. So God is so cool. Well, Nikki, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're Nikki Palmer. And I'm glad Hello. you're working at North Point. All right, Ryan Leak. Ryan Leak and I met, uh, it was seven years ago. We were both working for, uh, helping out with an organization called Passion Conferences. Yeah. And we got put in the same community group. We were right. door holding together. Yep. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. Uh, so, Ryan, tell us about your life. You've had a couple of uh, very interesting things that have happened. Yeah. Um, one book lately that just came out. Yeah. You got a couple viral videos on the internet. Okay. Tell yeah. us all about it. So, um, in 2013, um, I proposed to my wife, and she thought it would be cool to get engaged and married on the same day. So, for two years, I planned a surprise wedding. And so on June 7th, 2013, I got down on one knee and said, will you marry me? She said, yes. I said, just kidding. Will you marry me today? Uh, we opened up a room probably about this size, and a hundred of our family and friends were standing in there with the sign that said, today. Um, <laughs> that video went viral, and then uh, we got to go on a bunch of TV shows that led me to uh, doing a second documentary called Chasing Failure, where I tried out for the Phoenix Suns and uh, failed. <laughs> so, uh, and since then, uh, I had a book come out, Chasing Failure, and I actually had another new book that came out Friday called Unoffendable. Ryan, I did not know that. And we I were busy this horrible. morning. We were busy. Very with busy. This Talking about North chasing Point. failure. Yeah, I know. We, Tell we, us the name of the new one again. It's called Unoffendable No Offense, None Taken. That is fantastic. Yeah. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on Amazon. Let's send it up the charts, folks. Yeah. Get your phone out. If you want to buy it, buy it right now. Other right than that, now. feel free to put your phone up. But if you want to buy Ryan's book on Amazon, get Absolutely. your phone out and buy it right now. Thank you. I, yeah. I, I feel terrible that we did not know that today. It, no, um, it's great. <laughs> hey, uh, what, was the, what was the most glamorous TV show you were on because of the surprise wedding? And what was the most bootleg TV show that you went on? Um... The Queen Latifah show, hey, that was, uh, that was, that was Which I'm so sorry, but who knew Queen Latifah had her own show? Exactly. And then it went off the air, so she, she ain't on there no more. No? Yeah. We weren't her last show. It wasn't our fault. It was somebody else. Yeah, it wasn't because of me. I it was Sam Collier. Yeah, he was, was probably the last guest on her show. Shots fired. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, what was the best show? What was the most, like, the most amount of texts that friends are being like, oh my gosh, I saw you on the show. I mean, Good Morning America. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny because people act like it's a big deal that you're on Good Morning America, but nobody ever watches Good Morning America. <laughs> we're not awake. You know, so they're like, you were on Good Morning America? I'm like, when was the last time you watched Good Morning America? <laughs> Who interviewed so, you? Was it? Uh, some girl named Katie. Correct? No. Oh, some other girl. <laughs> Ryan, you would know that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, it was it was um, it was it was funny actually. We were in Minneapolis, and when the story broke, it, it's such an interesting thing how news breaks. It actually starts in Europe and makes its way to the United States because of the time difference. So, I was sitting at a hotel with one of my buddies, and all of a sudden my phone started buzzing like crazy. It was CNN, ABC, NBC, and it's a game of who's going to be first. So Good Morning America said, we will send a camera crew to wherever you are in the world. Just tell us, give us an address, and we will have somebody there within an hour. Dang. So there are people that are just on standby waiting to uh, catch a story. So the interview was like via phone, and then we went to New York the, the next day. Wow. If you yeah, haven't cool. seen this, you have to see it. You go to YouTube and just type in the surprise wedding. Yeah. And you can watch it. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's electric. Fun. Thank you. Fun. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Joy Phoenix. I had a four-month engagement. It was, didn't go viral. <laughs> You've set the bar really high. Gentlemen. I mean, go Hello. high. It's so yeah. impressive. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Joy, Hi. the thing I love about I've known Joy for about uh, probably 18, 19 years now, which is crazy. Um, Joy and her, uh, her husband is a good friend of mine. Billy Phoenix is the campus pastor at Buckhead Church. But Joy does a tremendous job. Ladies, if you um, currently have a career, want to have a career, uh, I love what they said about Coretta Scott King. She stood by her man and she stood on her own. And Joy does that really, really well. Joy is a leader. She is a massive force in the communication, the telecommunication world. And she walked away from it all to pursue another dream. To, yeah, to, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, I moved here. I'm from Los Angeles. I moved here in 1994. I was just going to stay through the Olympics. 
And just, um, I actually would add 90 days to the clock because I wanted to be home. Everyone wants to be home with your family and stuff in Southern California. And then I met my husband, and so I got planted here, which I now love. But um, it took me a long time to sort of love it. Um, and I worked in television, and it's a little bit... Atlanta now is a big film business, but it wasn't much in terms of television. And so um, I had offices in New York and um, L.A. that I managed. I worked for A&E for 27 years, and I left them recently to start my own production company. Um, um, you know, we've talked about being a pastor's wife, which is not a moniker I really <laughs> understand. I'm you're, like, I would what? say you're a very atypical pastor's wife. Well, this is what I hear, but I just sort of don't acknowledge it. I'm like, do people say like, hey, what's it like being an accountant's wife? It's just not a thing. <laughs> but, you know, it's it probably just because, you know, we've I've always sort of had, you know, I was married late and sort of stood on my own. But we do have two kids. They are in Cobb County, so they are starting school tomorrow. Um, which is wrong. Wrong. Just wrong. And I won't. I won't go on a rant about that. Okay. But anyway. So right. yeah. So that's Joy, sort of that's what fantastic. I do. Um, oh, we're A and E. A and E is not just A and E. What what channels does A and E own? A and E History, Lifetime, and all the spinoffs, Lifetime Movie Networks, and you know, uh, FYI, Viceland. You know, we had ten different networks. Wow. So I I did. I negotiated our distribution deals, so I worked with... Direct with Direct TV, Comcast. Comcast, Time Warner, all those guys. Can you imagine paying your cable bill? You know how painful that is? Try and get a billion dollars out of them. That's not... <laughs> that's not there's a you lot to... of blood, sweat, and tears. All of them are due... All of my deals were due, like, December 31st, which... Mm. Which just meant that I was gone. Really, I really worked through the Christmas holidays. And when you're married to a pastor, he's sort of busy um, over Christmas. <laughs> Can't quite Church get world, out of that. Right. Yeah, you know. And so I'm on a plane, you know, Christmas Eve, trying to get home from Philadelphia. You know, just kind of nightmare stories that I mm. lived for a long time. And eventually, after I missed my third birthday of my daughter, December 27th, you know, I was like, yeah, I should probably figure out how to work a more flexible schedule. So mm. that's why I left and started my own thing. Joy put, the, she put her foot down. She said, I'm work, I'm, I'm going to open an Atlanta office. I'm not moving to New York. You can just come here to see me. And they said, sure. They said, okay. <laughs> I kept thinking like, package me out. You should be firing me. But they didn't. So, That's so yeah, good. To, package yeah. me out. That's a business term that I just learned just now. If you want to work that into a conversation tomorrow, that would be so dope. <laughs> just tell your boss, tell, go into work tomorrow and be like, package me out today. All right. <laughs> um, let's talk about envy. All right. Um, envy is something that plagues all of us, but it's something that we've got to keep in check or else it will show up in other areas of our life. So let's just start with this. Free for all. Anybody jump in. How would you define envy? Anyone? I want it. I want it. Simple. I want it. I see something and I want it. Thank you, Nikki. Joy, you're about to jump in there. No, I just think it's like, well, they've got something that, you know, is attractive and should belong to me. And, I, and there's a certain sense of entitlement. I always think of envy. Mm. Things that make me envious are not, like, I, I don't envy the trying out for the Phoenix Suns because that is, it's never in the realm of my possibilities. <laughs> it's always something that I want. Uh. Something that, that I feel like, oh, no, I, I, could, I deserve that. There's a sense of entitlement attached to it for me. Yeah, I would simply say it's... Um... When, you, when your attention is consumed with other people's stuff. Yep. When, you, when you find yourself being so aware of who another person is or the things or accolades that they have. That's how I would define it. So all three of you have made nice careers, you have nice families, you picture perfect lifestyle. What age did you quit being envious? When did you put all that behind you? Um, how old am I? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, uh, I'm 30. I probably put it away at 29. <laughs> I mean, that, like, it's not like, it's not like this distant past. I mean, it, it's, and I think it just because of the rise of social media, um, I wouldn't say I was as envious at 21 as I was at 25 just because of the rise of social media. You would say you were more envious at 25 than you were even at 21? Absolutely, because the awareness increased. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you became more aware of what people drove, what they wore, and what they were eating for lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you were able, I never had to compare my dinners to my friend's dinners until. <laughs> Five years ago. But Ryan, you've been on big shows. Right. You've, you've got success. You've, you're an author. There's a book that has your name on it. Yeah. Does, does it get to a point where you go, okay, enough's enough. I've made it. Um, you, you, would, you would think so. Um, 
I remember the first time I went to a Mavs game in Dallas, me and my wife sat on the back wall in the nosebleeds. Like, my head was hitting concrete while we were watching the game. <laughs> like, you couldn't get any further back. And Dirk looked like he was, like, 4'2". Yeah, I mean, it, it was just, you know, and uh, as – as I began to meet more people, make a little bit more money, I, I got to sit a little bit closer better and a little bit closer and a little bit closer. But every time I got to a better seat, I wouldn't even be watching the game. I would look at the people that were 20 rows ahead of me, and I'd go, I wonder what they do for a living. That's right. How did, how did they get their seats? I remember one time I got uh, somebody gave me um, tickets behind the Nuggets bench, and I still was looking at the NBA players going, well, I wonder what it would be like to sit on the bench. Mm. It, it, it was never enough. I mm. could never be close enough. I end up in a locker room with Kobe Bryant, and I'm still going, well, I wish I could play. <laughs> I mean, it just, it, just, it just never stops. And so at some point, um, you, you, have to, you have to say, okay, enough is enough. And, and I think for me, the, the biggest thing is I stopped playing the comparison game in, in the sense of saying, um, really deciding to let everybody else win. So when once I decided to be a loser, once I decided to say, you can have a better house than me, you can have nicer clothes than me, once I decided, hey, you win, I saved so much money <laughs> and I found so much joy in all of the, the stuff that I actually had and, and realized, man, my life was a lot better than I thought it was once I just let everybody else win. That is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Nikki, you, what about when you got your show? <laughs> um, I was young. I was young, um, oh. hungry. I was, for some reason, someone put me on TV uh, nationally at 21. <laughs> you were 21 years mm -hmm. old mm -hmm. on a national show. Mm-hmm. On ESPN? One of the um, ESPN networks? That, well, actually, it was probably more regional, 21, 22, uh, national, 23. Wow. So I, I grew up fast. I kind of had to. Um, I kind of echo a lot of what Ryan said. But for me, it was a process. It was a maturity process. It was um, a cleansing process. Uh, here I am. You know, I'm the youngest by probably a decade. Uh, I was also surrounded by a lot of um, non-believers as well. Um, I was kind of around a scene that, um, well, first of all, we were in college towns <laughs> every week. We were in a different college town, and I essentially felt like I was in college for four years doing, you know, this show. Um, so for me, it was, it was a process of growing up. It was a process of knowing what I wanted on the inside. Um, because kind of like what Ryan said, the outside's easy to see. It's, yeah. oh, you're on TV. Oh, you're traveling. You're on a plane. You got the Sky Miles. You've got, you know, Adidas sending you shoes. You've got all this stuff that's coming to you, and it's just stuff. You know, what you didn't see was how lonely I was in a hotel room. You know, what you didn't see was me changing three times in a 15-passenger van and make sure that, you know, no one's looking in because, you know, um, that's, the, that's the glamorous side of it. Um, you know, and for me, I had something inside of me, and I said, um, <laughs> hopefully not get emotional with this, but I knew that um, when I met someone that I loved more than my job, it was worth it. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of prayer. Um, that took a lot of being kind of outside the box in the profession that I was in. Um, I was surrounded by a lot of ambitious and hungry women, which is great, but a lot of them didn't want a family. A lot of them didn't want consistency. A lot of them enjoyed, you know, whether it be being out in these college town at bars and things like that. Um, but for me, I said, all right, Lord, like, I want this in my life. I want consistency. I want to stop wanting the next thing. Um, it's not that you're not ambitious anymore. It's not that you settle for complacency, but you know you're wanting more. And for me, when I met my husband, um, that was kind of a huge changing point in my life and going, you know what, I can have it all, but I'm mature enough and hopefully humble enough to let all the other stuff go. And for me, I enjoyed being a loser far more than being a winner because I, I really did know that I could have it all. I just shifted my dreams and shifted what I wanted. And um, the quicker that I did that, the 
well, you reap the rewards beautifully. And, and I think that's huge, Nikki, because a lot of times when we're envious of people's position or job or stuff or title or relationship, you don't see all the other stuff. Like you don't see no. the, all the Christmases and New Year's that oh, you gosh. spent in weird towns. Yeah, so <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Um, well, it's not funny, but a, a lot to what Joy said too. I mean, I was spending Christmases alone, Thanksgivings alone, New Year's alone, but yet I'm on TV. I'm doing all these bowl mm -hmm. games for ESPN and I'm getting all this swag and, you know, I'm on the, you know, um, sidelines. Like, life couldn't be better. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I'm missing out on a lot. I'm missing out on family. I'm missing out on, um, you know, precious time. I'm watching, at the time, Buckhead online, you know, or things like that. And so, for me, it was it was lonely. And actually, I'll never forget, I was doing a bowl game in Detroit, um, which I don't know if y'all been to Detroit, but there's not a lot in Detroit, and especially in December, it's, it's cold. Um, and there's no one around. And I was at my hotel, and... Um, I was by myself, of course, and I just wanted um, a glass of wine and chocolate cake. So Clay, I go up there and I get my wine and my chocolate cake and I go back home and I flew up on Christmas day um, to Detroit. And then the next year I saw the same people <laughs> at Detroit, oh, same Christmas. And um, the guy that was serving me remembered me. And he said, I bet you're gonna want your chocolate cake and red wine. And I said, <laughs> I don't know if I want this for my life. <laughs> You know? I don't want a relationship with the chocolate wine, the chocolate cake, and the wine guy in Detroit. Exactly, but his kids were doing great. He had a new kid since the last time wow. I saw him, so we well. got to catch up. It was, it was wonderful. <laughs> Joy I, I think one of the things for me is I don't feel like it goes away. I, I mean, mm. yeah. you know, you don't actually get over that. I think mm -hmm. it's a tension you manage rather than a problem to solve. I think about right. it as in terms of driving a car. When I was in learning how to drive a car, one of the things they talked about was, you know, all the rules of the road. And one was to aim high in steering, you know, because if you look right at the, at the road immediately in front of you, you could kind of get distracted or whatever. Mm. And so for me, if I'm too much in whatever it is that's right in front of me and judging all the people around me, you know, I'll get into the gutter of envy, right? If these people are like yeah. ahead of me, or if I'm comparing the other way, it becomes pride, right? So there's, there's gutters on either side of those roads that happen mm. when you don't aim high in steering. You can have a spiritual metaphor for that for sure. That's a good but, one. But I just think that, um, you know, there's something about envy for us that is really um, rooted in this idea of a scarcity mentality. Mm. And I think that when we think about God and if we define God as, um, somebody who only gives a limited number of gifts to his friends and to the people he loves, and it's scarce, and you have to, you know, duke it out, right? So it's sort of like if, if this is something I have and it's going to be Ryan gets it or I get it, and it's scarcity, there's only one thing, versus sort of defining God as a God of abundance and saying, no, God is a God who loves to shower his children with gifts, and they're not going to be, they're not going to look the same, so Nikki's gifts, Ryan's gifts, Clay's gifts, they're not going to be the same as mine, right? We're not going to be driving down the same road. And if I am busy looking around at them, I'm going to end up in one of those gutters. I'm going to end up in the envy gutter or the pride gutter. And, and I think that's, that, that's something important to recognize. It's the tension to manage that we're just not going to solve it. And we're, we're joking about, oh, yeah, we have it all figured out. We so don't have it yeah. figured out. And neither will you. But... As long as you start to develop sort of tools for how to cope yes. with it, I think that's really important. Look, I want to stop on that for a second, Joy, because that's an interesting, I love the angle that God has something to say about this. Because a lot of times we think, well, I'm envious of Ryan's thing. I wish I had a video that had 1.5 million views, but I don't. But, and I, so I make it about Ryan, but it's not really about Ryan. It's about God. Sure. Why yeah. is that true? What does God have to do with envy? Well, it's like, it's like, do I trust that God is giving, you know, Ryan the gifts that are intended for him or do I not? Am I questioning him? So it's really not something between the two of us as much as it is saying like, God, you're not treating me fair. Wow. And at which point, you know, God's like, well, fairness is not a value, right? He, <laughs> he you know, I, I say this to my kids all the time. I'm like, oh no, situational ethics. You do not get fair, right? I totally lifted this from Andy Stanley, but I'm like, oh, you don't do fair. Fair is that you actually cook some of these meals around here. Fair is that you pay for it your, your, your own way. I'm like, right. we do something way beyond fair and it's called grace. And so yeah. don't be talking to me about fair. And that's really what yeah. our, our issue is. Yes. 
I that, think. that I'm frustrated that God hasn't given me what I think he should give me, <clears throat> yeah. which I think is a huge step just tonight so you know. If there is someone that has something that you want, you are wasting energy to be mad at them, to be frustrated at them. Absolutely. Take it up with God. Tonight, I think a very appropriate prayer is to say, God, why haven't you given me what I think I want? Because I think then maybe yeah. God starts to change that and go, is that really what you want? And why do you not trust that I'm gonna give you what you need? Ryan? Yeah, I think something that you alluded to, which is huge, is once you have reached a specific status or you've at least rubbed shoulders with somebody that is extremely successful and you, for the first time, get to see their behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you won't be jealous anymore. Mm -hmm. Once you see what it takes to be them, you're like, I, I don't want your behind the scenes. I, I thought, I, but once you get there, you're like, I, I don't. And it, like, even, even as an author, one of the top Christian authors is currently going through a divorce. Mm. And I'm going, I mean, it'd be great if my book sold a lot, but at the cost of what? Mm -mm. It's not that your, serious. Your like, surprise wedding is not near as cool if you and your wife don't work out. Exactly. Right. You're like, like, that's a big deal. So you're, <laughs> like, right. you're like, hey, I mean, there, w what is so important that, and, and again, that's nothing against that author or anything, but you're right. just going, if, if you could, if she could take back some book sales and keep her marriage, I think she'd pick her marriage. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so it's like you, the people that sometimes you look at, you, I mean, we, we hear it all the time. You're looking at their highlights. Yeah. Nobody posts their behind the, their right. real That's behind right. the scenes. Nobody so posts you, the Christmas Eve at the hotel, no. at the Hampton Inn in Detroit. <laughs> right. Hooking up that decaf coffee. Hey, but the snow in the background so really beautiful. aesthetically yeah. made it pleasing. <laughs> um, as we were talking about this, Joy, you brought up a verse. Um, would you yeah. give this to us? So it's not John 3.16. It's not John 3.16, but it's easy to remember because it's James 316. And this verse came to me when I was, I was actually flying to LA and I was going to a convention and it was a big television convention and it was a lot of elbowing who can be in front, who can get in front of the right people and stuff. And, and I found this verse and I memorized this verse and it is so, it was just so, it, it was a life change for me. And, and the verse says this, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder, disorder, and every evil practice. Not some evil practices. You will have every evil that practice. That is huge. And for me, right, <laughs> drop the mic. James Say is like, it. yeah, deal with that. And, and, it, and it, it made me think, I'm like, all right, well, so every evil practice. So where there's envy, there's adultery. Where there's envy, there's lying. Where there's e envy, there's theft. Yes. Where there's envy, there's, you know, and, and you go through anything you know about and you're like, hmm, yeah, envy probably has something to do with it. It's part of the recipe there. And so I thought about it. And for me, I, I really related to the selfish ambition because it's always about me. Um, Sometimes, you know, the comparison game, even when I can check out of that, I'm like going, oh, yeah, but I still want to get my way, mm -hmm. right? So envy and selfish ambition, it's what God really wants to purge from my life. And that requires aiming high and steering and not getting into this comparison game. I am so glad you brought this verse because you feel yeah. the angst from James. You know, this, mm -hmm. is, this is the brother of Jesus. And I'm sure he's just wanting so badly to go, how do I make this as heavy as possible? <laughs> because we all think, oh, ha ha, Nick Jonas is jealous. That's cool. I bet his girl's happy that he's jealous, whatever. Or we, have, we all have that kind of envy that's in all of us. But James is going, no, 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 get rid of it. Because wherever envy plants itself, it brings all this evil with it that we don't realize is with it. Well, and, and if you read the whole chapter of James 3, what you'll find out is he's talking a lot about the tongue and a lot of things. He's like, who can tame the tongue? And, you know, he talks a lot about the things we say, which I think we do slash post, you know, mm. to, to, that gets into the things that really cause poison and mm. damage in our lives. Mm. And that's the thing. God just doesn't want us to be damaged. Mm -hmm. he, he really, mm -hmm. th that's the whole point. It's not that he that's like, well, deal with it. Suck it up, buttercup. You know, mm -hmm. that is not what he's saying. He's saying like, no, no, I want you to be healthy. Yes. And that's why I yes. want to take it out of, yes. out of your equation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Let's, let's land on this last question. This, I, I asked these, um, these three brilliant people to be as 
boots on the ground, give us handles for this. How do you battle? How do you actually battle envy? Because Ryan, I love your metaphor of being in an arena, no matter where you're sitting, you're looking somewhere else going, how did they get to sit there? And right. all of us do that, it never ends. I think one of the most helpful things for me to be around Andy Stanley is getting to see that, hey, in the Christian industry, he's reached the peak, the pinnacle, and you never get to the point where you go, enough's enough. He'll say it, that you never get to the spot where you go, oh, it's, it, now I finally have enough notoriety, enough popularity, enough, enough money, enough stuff. It never, ever ends. Mm. So how do you actually battle it? What are the specific things that you've done in your life to manage that tension that Joy talked about? Um, for me, professionally, it was a lot, I've unfollowed a lot of people. Yeah. And I mean, social media, like we said, I mean, it's the highlight reel. You're, you're not seeing the behind the scenes. And for me, I had to unfollow a lot of women that were doing what I was doing because mm. here I am finally, I, I feel personally fulfilled. I'm spiritually fulfilled. Mm. Um, I have peace in my life. And it took a lot of maturity. Mm. It, it was a process. Um, it was a very humbling process. And for me, that unfollow button, or that, you know, save draft saved me a lot of heartache <laughs> because it's so easy to get caught up. And I'm going, oh, well, she's doing the, you know, the primetime game. We were just, we were equals. Like, how come I didn't get that? Like, we have the same credentials. Yeah. And it never stops. And even now, even though I'm in a completely different professional world, but there still are those feelings. So for me, I had to learn what keeps me in check. And for me, I write. So I would write a lot and I encourage, you know, all of you, whatever that might be, whether it's exercise, whether it's, you know, writing, painting, singing, playing the guitar, whatever it is, find that individual outlet for yourself <clears throat> that is a cleansing mechanism for you. Mm. And for me, that was writing and staying true to my family because like I said, when I found someone that I loved more than my job, that was my backbone in addition to my faith and that for me got me out of that rut. And that, that's what continues to get me out of the rut because it never ends. Right. It just, the situation's different. That's right. But those same feelings, I mean, come back irregardless of where you are or what you're doing. Nikki, I recently, someone, I read a, I read a book about technology and one of the things they recommended was not following people that you don't actually know on social media. <laughs> Yeah. which I have found, now that's not to say that people that you know, you can't find ways to be envious of them because you certainly can't. Sometimes it's the people closest to us that we get envious of, but it has been really helpful for me to unfollow some certain people that are just celebrity types because yeah. in the end, I've just found it's just not healthy to follow them. Joy, it reminded me of what you stopped doing years ago, which I remember you telling me about. Can you share I, that? I don't, well, I was in a uh, airplane for five, stuck for five hours or something. This was all, you know, we had no devices. We couldn't have devices at the time. And I was with a colleague and she had this stack of magazines and she's like, do you want something to read? I was like, oh no, I don't read magazines. And, and you're talking like, like us weekly people. Us like people, all oh, it didn't matter. I mean, town and country, it didn't matter what oh, it was, okay. Vanity Fair. I was just like, I'm, no, I don't, I don't read magazines. I mean, unless it's a cooking magazine. <laughs> I, it, seriously, <laughs> that's the only subscription I get. And she's like, why is this? She's looking at me like I'm nuts. And I just said, oh, I, I can't take the assault on my senses. I go, look at it. And I cut the magazine out and I flip to one page. And I go, I can't afford that watch. I will never be that skinny. I go, oh, <laughs> my house does not look that good. Can't drive that. You know, I mean, every single page was something that I just found provoked and it was, it touched mm. something in me. Again, you called it an assault. I did. I felt That's like it was an word. assault on my, <laughs> yeah, wow. I, I, just on my psyche. And I'm like, I, I can't do it. I'd rather sit here and work the crossword puzzle in the back of the Sky magazine, <laughs> which is plenty <laughs> challenge for me, right. um, so, you know, than doing that. And that was just sort of like figuring out what that boundary is. Yeah. That's great, Joy. Ryan, anything else that you do specifically to battle envy? Yeah. Uh, on top of like watching who you follow, which is huge, I think. Um, for me, a lot of it does come down to social media. That's probably where the genesis of a lot of envy happens in two directions, not just people I'm envious of, but even what I'm posting, realizing yeah. somebody yes. can be. Yes. Because if you're honest, sometimes you want closer seats so that other people are envious of yes. you. Yes. And so... The well, only reason why I bought this was so that I could post it right. and show you that I had it. Yeah, no, no one gets what? courtside seats to not take a That's photo. Right. It's like, you're, we're right. here. Um, is real. Right. So there's, uh, so there's three questions um, I filter all of my posts through. 
Uh, what are you posting? Why are you posting it? Mm -hmm. Who are you posting it for? Mm. And if I'm honest, most of the time, there is a person or a group of people in my mind that I know I'm trying to impress. Mm. I, I know it. Mm -hmm. And I'll even be uh, extremely honest, even just about this weekend, speaking at North Point Community Church in our industry, in the Christian industry of speaking, that is a really speakering. speaking, speakering. Um, <laughs> you just verb speakering. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, is, is a big deal. And so even in coming here, I had to, with my own time with the Lord, make a decision. I, I'm not going to post about my time at North Point Community mm -hmm. Church. Why? Because I know my heart's desire and, and my friends that are speakers, I want them to know. Mm -hmm. I, I want people to think Ryan is good enough to speak at North Point. I know that in my heart. I, I want somebody to see that. And I'm just going, Ryan, is thousands of people that you're already talking to not enough? Mm. You, need a, you, need a, you need a couple more hundred people to know? You need a couple <laughs> more, like... What, what is that really, really doing? And so even from my own heart, I've just gone, you know what? I'm just going to go and do a mm -hmm. good job mm -hmm. or try. You're like, like mm -hmm. and, and who really needs to know that doesn't already know? Mm -hmm. and, and the cool part even is throughout the week, I had so many friends that either didn't know or maybe they found out through other people posting about it that just validated me for who I am. Mm -hmm not my gift. Mm. And it's like, you realize people already love you. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, well, if I just, if I can just show them who I am, yeah. if I can just put on display how awesome my life is, I mean, what, 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 what is that, what is that really, what is that really doing? You That's know, and so you, you've got to, you've got to really be looking at your heart. You know, if you're thinking, oh, if I just tweet Andy, hey, Andy, thanks for having me this weekend. <laughs> I'm not talking to Andy. <laughs> You know, like, but you, you're in your mind, you're like, hey, I'm honoring it. No, you're not. You're, you're hoping somebody sees it yeah. that's maybe thinking about having you speak, like, oh, snap, he spoke. And it's just like, those are things that are all selfish ambition. And so w what I've now done is I've taken all of that and gone, I post a whole lot less <laughs> once I ask myself those three questions. That's true. Because I'm going, I know I'm trying to impress that person. Mm -hmm. And either A, I don't need to, or maybe they're a person I shouldn't be impressing in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end, I think one of the things that kills envy and kills selfish ambition is celebrating other people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, so, so and just really finding people and even using my social media for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many times where I'm just like, I just want to brag on volunteers because they don't get paid to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And they get off work early and stay late, and I just... So I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna brag on them. They're like, hey, weren't you just at this place or that place or this place? And you just, it's like, yeah, you might catch me in the airport. Like, you might know that I'm in Atlanta, but I don't need to let you know. Like, th those are things that I've just gone. No, I, I really want to celebrate the things that matter the most, which are my family, and and my friends, and really find a way to genuinely be happy for yep. other people's success. Yep. And so I think when you do that, you you find yourself like. A losing, going, hey, I don't I don't need to be better than yeah, you. you. Can I can win. You can I can win. compliment That's your right. outfit and that doesn't mean I have a bad one. I can compliment your house and that doesn't diminish mine. I can compliment abundance, your speaking. Abundance, abundance, it's abundance. Just, abundance. Yeah, there's, there's enough to go around. And sometimes like when you're in the same field, you feel like you can't give a person a compliment because that somehow diminishes your get it's like I can compliment other speakers, I can compliment other mm -hmm. it feels so good to just not feel like there mm -hmm. is this competition and I don't and I'm not waiting for them to say oh you too mm -hmm. it's like no like it's it's, it's a genuine great, thing. one of my favorite expressions I saw this little kid drawing and I just loved it and it said it just said be a fountain not a drain <laughs> and I'm like that's oh, right I love that. be a fountain not a drain yes. and that's part of what celebrating yes. looks like yes. I have a friend who travels in ways that I'm like, oh, I love it. I mean, I am, I love to travel, right? And she is still in a position in her life where she still travels a ton and she shoots me text messages all the time. And I have to go like, oh, I wish I was 22 and traveling the world still. 
but I'm not. And so I You're starting school, public it. school tomorrow. <laughs> I'm starting public school tomorrow. Well, your high schooler is. Um, you know, my high schooler is. But, you know, I, I just, I look at that and I go, God bless her. Like, I have just, and I, and I returned the text messages with, I am so happy for you because this is amazing. And this is, and there's something about your, your emotions follow your behavior. So articulating and actually saying and speaking out That's into the huge. world, um, a celebration of other people does a lot for, for you because suddenly you realize I'm a fountain. I am not diminishing this person. I am not allowing myself to be sucked into or fall into a gutter in a way that is unhealthy. That's I am actually huge. putting back into the world something that is refreshing. And when mm. you think about it and consider your life mission is going like, God made me in, to live out of his abundance mm. and he has more for me. He is the ultimate fountain. I can put that back out into the world. And it is amazing what that does in terms of just shifting your mindset. Because really, what we're talking about here is just a lot of mental games. I mean, yes, you can do the practical things. But this is so much of mental um, discipline. And it'll feel like discipline a lot of the days, I think. Yeah. I love it. All right, Joy, why don't you do this? Let's end tonight by why don't you be a fountain for empty nights? Okay. Would you, um, I'm serious, I would love for you to pray for all of us here. And I would love for you to pray... James 3.16, and just ask God, if you would, and I'd love to invite you to just pray along with joy and ask God that if there is envy in us, that he would get it out of us and that he would allow us to break the chain of envy in all of our hearts. So, Joy, thank you for praying for us. Father God, you know, you know what's in our hearts. You know how this is... Um, this is a hard thing for us at any age, any stage. Um, you know, um, as, as our ultimate fountain, what it is we need to do in our lives. But God, sometimes we don't know. And sometimes we don't listen well. Sometimes we don't follow fast. God, and that's what the kind of people we want to be. We want to be people who have hearts that are fully devoted to you. Even when we don't know what that means, we, we know we want to have more peace. We know that envy robs us of so much, God, and it is not what you plan for us. God, I just pray for each person here that for when we, when we run into envy, when we run into selfish ambition, that we can recognize the havoc that it causes in our life. We can recognize the disorder. We can recognize the, the path that it's taking us on that is away from you and that is not healthy. And God, I just pray for each person here, whether they are new here, whether they don't know about who you are and what you can do, that just this week, that you will give them the ability to recognize the poison that is envy and instead look to you and instead see the abundant love that you have for them individually that you have for us collectively, God, and that you would just give us the ability to lean into you and to say, God, we know that you are for us. We know that you are trustworthy, and we know that you intend to give us good gifts. God, however that falls on people here tonight, I just thank you so much for each person here. I thank you for the divine appointment you gave each of us to be here, and that you would just help us um, see you in our lives day in, day out, moment by moment, situation by situation. God, we love you so much, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Joy, thank you. Nikki, thank you. Ryan Leek, thank you.